Aw, oh, why so blue? No, really, why blue? Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my girl! Send me a kiss, my water! Baby, my heart's on fire! The minions spotted another skeleton-based action figure and brought it in, saying, Hey, you should review this one! Well, this one is Grim Spectre, aka Earth Scorcher, from the epic hacks line made by Boss Fight Studios. Hax stands for Highly Articulated Character Kit System. And thus we think that's insanely clever, it's not too hard to come up with an acronym. For example, my name stands for Delightfully Entertaining Awesomely Talented Hunk. But nobody ever brings that up. The Hax line has several of these figures with different colors and different gear to dress them up with. For the Grim Spectre, they gave him a hooded robe. An obvious tribute to me. See the figure in an actual plastic container. On the back of the package card, it shows the figure in some staged photos where the robe is obviously not the same material they actually used. There's company contact info and a story bio for the Grim Spectres. For the sake of brevity, I'll just do the first paragraph. The history of this ancient race remains mostly cloaked in shadow. But within the darkness of that shadow, Look the Grim Spectres! Mysterious beings of an almost translucent illumination, clad in mystical robes and carrying spell books. Some have hypothesized that these spectral epic hack skeletons are the spiritual leaders of this entire species, opening portals into other temporal zones, sending their foot soldiers in to create havoc and chaos. But now, let's unbox this figure and see if he's as grim as me. <coughs> Out of box, the Grim Spectre Skeleton comes with a pair of curled, clenched fist hands, a left and right pair of pointy finger hands, a pair of open palm slappy hands, a translucent flame accessory, a mystical, magical, Book accessory, a plastic hood cowl accessory, a Halloween pumpkin head accessory, this cool scythe accessory, and a red plastic epic hacks display stand. And this is the Grim Spectre out of box. It's scaled to the size of a six inch figure, putting it at the same level as Star Wars Black Series or Marvel Legends. And a word about the materials, the skeleton itself feels like a softer plastic. Not totally soft, but not totally rigid. Each part has a little bit of flex to it. And they presumably did this so the bones wouldn't be brittle or easily broken. So I'm prepared to forgive it feeling just a tad spongy to the touch, so long as none of the parts snap off when handling or posing. The skeleton is a deep blue color, which supposedly is meant to convey the illusion that Grim Spectre is throbbing with mystical power. But in actuality, it's more like the skeleton of a smurf. Or perhaps they just left me in the freezer for too long. But he comes packaged wearing this brown robe, made of actual polyester-like material. Which is good in some ways because it means that the articulation isn't hampered by stiff plastic garments. But bad in other ways because cloth cut to that scale just doesn't hang, ripple, or drape in the same way. So it always looks a bit fakey. The robe is cinched around the waist with this flexible plastic belt which has some excellent molded and painted details like old leather, festooned with flasks, pouches, scrolls, and a strap for holding the scythe. I believe the belt can be removed if the pelvis and the spine can be popped apart like a normal ball socket joint. I tried but gave up when I thought I was putting on too much pressure. I shall risk no harm to this thing. The holes in the feet weren't drilled deep enough so they don't hold into the pegs on the display stand very well. But if you can get them to stick, you can use the stand to brace the figure so it won't fall over all the time. And you'll probably need it. 
because skeleton figures in general don't stand too well on their own if they have bare feet, because skeleton feet just don't have enough surface area to provide stable footing. But the Grim Spectre skeleton is articulated, the head is ball socketed and will rotate 360 degrees, as well as nodding back and forth, though the ridge at the back of the skull prevents it from angling backwards too far. The jaw is articulated and will open and close. Each arm is ball socketed and would do a full 360 degree rotation, Except when you go too far, you start to twist the cloth. Each arm will also splay in and outward. It will also twist and rotate slightly in the socket, and you could see it if the cloth weren't in the way. Each elbow will do a 90 degree bend. The hands are ball socketed and will do a full rotation. They are also hinged and will go up and down, or in and out, depending on how the ball socket is actually rotated. The hip and pelvis are joined together with a ball socket joint, so they will rotate. It will also allow for a slight ab crunch. Hike the rope out of the way and you will see that each hip is double hinged. There is a ball socket hinge that plugs straight into the hip, and another one that plugs straight into the thigh bone. So each leg will fully rotate, at least until they start bumping into other parts of the body. They will also splay outwards. A double hinged knee set will allow the legs to fold backwards all the way. Each foot will tilt in and out, and also tilt forwards and backwards. I wish the head could lean back further. I also wish the neck could bend where it joins to the rib cage, and the cloth at the shoulders won't allow for proper full rotation. Same for the waist. Between the joints and the display stand, there is more than enough to make dramatic use of his many accessories. <coughs> the hood is flexible and can be eased over the skeleton head and joined with the capelet to complete the impression that he is dressed like me. The hands can be removed by twisting and pulling gently until they pop loose, put a replacement hand in the same way, then they can be used to cradle the other accessories for any creepy dramatic effect you wish. The book accessory has nothing written on its pages, but it does have this tassel with this little pokey thing sticking up. The flame has a hole drilled into the base, Plug those two together, and you have a mystical fire blazy book. There's actually quite a lot of detail on the base of the book with pentagrams, rough texture, and gilding. And the specter can be posed to be holding the book to invoke his earth scorchy powers. Getting him to hold the scythe can be tricky because these plastic hands are slightly flexible, but not so much that you don't want to risk mashing the plastic or bending it. The best way to accomplish it is to pick a thin part of the side haft, ease it in backwards, until it gets past the thumb and hooks around the fingers. The hood is molded with a ratty, rotty cloth texture, and even some artful holes in the back. Though from behind it does make it look as if the back is completely missing. If you remove the hood, you can pop the skull off of its ball socket, and replace the head, though with the heads removed, you can also remove the capelet if you so wish. It's also a handy way to adjust the robe if the cloth ever pushes out of place. Even the capelet has a molded and painted buckle on it, which is a nice touch. Just ease the capelet back on, then pop on the pumpkin head in its place. And that does give it a nice touch when you're celebrating the long Halloween. The pumpkin has some nice shading, it's not all flat orange, with yellowish green flames on the inside. But wait, there's more! Since other figures often share the ball socket head, you can actually swap out both heads and use the heads from other action figure lines. They won't plug in firmly, but they will balance in place well enough for display purposes. What a revolting development. For size comparison, here is the Epic Hacks Grim Spectre next to the Japanese Skeleton Warrior. Here is the Epic Hacks Grim Spectre next to the Ku model Nightmare Reaper. And here is the Grim Spectre next to one of my adorable little death chibis. From the Epic Hacks line, I've only reviewed the Grim Spectre, but if this figure is indicative, then the line seems pretty good. Will I get the other figures, like the pirate or the gladiator? Probably not, because they don't have scythes. But as for Grim Spectre, positives are that skeletons are cool in almost any form, even if they're made of blue plastic. 
It proportions well with other 6-inch figures and their accessories. The articulation is good and yields a wide swath of posing options. The accessories allow for some nifty display customization, and it's fun to just fiddle around with. Negatives are that you can't easily remove the robe and belt, so if you wanted to have the skeleton all by itself, you're probably out of luck. And if a blue skeleton doesn't do it for you, then you may not go for this one, even with the included accessories. The plastic is softer, and the joints feel as if they might lose their ability to hold poses over time. I wish the head and neck could lean further back, and that it would fit more securely into the display base. I also would have preferred a black robe for... reasons. But overall, there isn't much to complain about, and I give the Epic Hacks Grim Spectre... 9 out of 10 deaths. Time to add this one to my skeleton crew. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, oh baby. Tell them all, and tell me I'm your own.